Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hello, St. Anne Parish, and welcome to this week's Quick Things. I am on my way back, I'm presuming as this is being um, put out to all of you, on my way, on my way back from 10 days away, uh, but I wanted to check in on a few things. First of all, a reminder that um, we will worship, of course, this Sunday as we continue our celebration of Easter, Mass at 4 p.m. and 9.30 a.m. Um, please join us if you're if you're fully vaccinated and ready and eager to come back um, into the thick of things. We hope you will. We need to register online, especially as more and more people are are kind of uh, getting ready to, to to join us again for each er, for in person mass. Uh, so we be sure that people have a, have a place to sit and we don't have to turn people away. We're reassessing the mass schedule. I said that I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, and so we'll let you know soon. Uh, what might happen as we go forward in terms of our mass schedule. But again, 4 p.m. Saturday, 10 or 9.30, 9.30 a.m. Sunday, the 4 p.m. Mass, as always, will be live, live streamed. Um, sign up is very easy. It's been uh, streamlined, so, so you can find that um, at the website, stnwasa.org. There's a link with this email as well. Now, another rerun of sorts this week. Um, but, but not if you haven't seen it. And I really would hope that all of us would, would have an opportunity to um, spend some time reflecting, listening to, see, viewing, and reflecting upon the homily that was offered as part of our Lenten Voices series by Bishop Jerry Kakanis, uh, Bishop Emeritus of Tucson, Arizona. He offers an excellent homily reflection on the parable of the Good Samaritan. So this is not a particularly Lenten thing. It's probably more more of an Easter thing. Um, we want to know how to live as people of the risen Lord, and the parable of the Good Samaritan gives us a very clear understanding of what that means to live as disciples of the risen Lord, and I think Bishop Kakanis sets this up for us very well. So please, um, uh, I don't want to say enjoy, it's a challenge, but I hope you'll appreciate what Bishop Kakanis has to say, struggle with his message, and please share it as well. The, the video, the link can be shared very easily. Share it with others who might appreciate his message. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to him, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. Now a priest happened to be going down the road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor 
to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do the same. The Gospel of the Lord. When did it happen for you? When did you become aware? When were your eyes opened and you could see? You know, all of us have had moments when we became aware, when our eyes were opened and we could see where love is needed. She dressed plainly, although her appearance was striking, with her braided hair and her face set off by the long line of her jaw, a lady, a tough lady. Dorothy May Day was born in Bath Beach, Brooklyn. She came to know the Lord as she read from an old tattered Bible in the attic of her childhood home. She became a Catholic. And she says, I know exactly where it happened for me. I was down by the pier one day, and I saw a man sitting all by himself. In front of him was a wooden crate on which he had spread out some newspaper. And on that newspaper, he had placed his meager supper. And there he sat and ate with some semblance of dignity. And I understood, she said, in that moment of how people are in need, in need of care and compassion and attention. Where did it happen for you? When were your eyes opened and you could see? Mev Puglio was a photojournalist in the cause of justice. Her life, her passion, which was care of the poor, was snatched away from her at a very young age. But she says, I know exactly where it happened for me. My father was a traveling salesman and he took me on a trip to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. There I sat, she said, on a city bus. And as we were driving along, I looked out of the right of the bus, and there I saw these well-dressed people, plush cars, magnificent buildings. And I looked out of the left of the bus, and there I saw these shanties, people poorly clad, children with bare feet playing little games in the street. And I looked out of the front window of the bus, and there I saw on the top of the hill the image of Christ the Savior with his arms outstretched. And I decided, she said, 13 years of age, I decided that I wanted to be a bridge, building these two worlds together. She was a photojournalist in the cause of justice, but she contracted brain cancer. And as she was in her home with her wonderful husband, Mark, she didn't want to go into a hospital with all the tubes and so on that they would impose, but she was in her own home. And do you know that her neighbors, they called them the friends of Arco Street, would come and do vigilance by her side, giving her a little sip of water, giving her tender care and concern. She said, you know, I'd rather die young, having lived my life with meaning, rather into old age, never having found any meaning in my life. Where did it happen for you? When did you become aware? When were your eyes opened and you could see? I remember when I first came to the Diocese of Tucson, I went with a group of religious leaders to Altar in Mexico. 
And there we were on the road that led from Altar to Sasebe in the United States. And as I was standing there, these vans kept coming by filled with people. And one of them stopped and the lady rolled down the window. And as I looked inside, I could see these people just jammed close inside, fear on their faces as they were about to make this trek north. And the lady next to the door turned to me and said, Padre, su bendición. And I gave them a blessing. But as I looked into their eyes, I could see the fear, the struggle, the concern for their families, for their loved ones, for themselves. It was in that moment that my eyes were opened and I could see. See where love is needed and try as best I can to respond. You know, the story of the Good Samaritan is a story about seeing. It's a story about time. There was, as we heard, this man who was accosted by robbers and left in the street on the road to Jericho. The priest saw him, saw him, but passed by. The Levite noticed him, but passed by. You see, they couldn't see. Their eyes were not opened. But it was the Levite who walked away as well as the priest. But then the Samaritan came, and he really could see, and he stopped. You know, all of them had things that they were about, certainly the priest, certainly the Levite, but they didn't want to give any time to this one that they saw. It was only the Samaritan who, with all the things he had to do, stopped and gave his time and attention to the one who was in need. The story of the Good Samaritan is the story, our story, with eyes that see and a willingness to give my time to someone who is in need, even though I have other responsibilities, even though I had other things to do, to stop, to give time to the one who is in need. You know, some of the great saints of the church were models for us of what we are called to be. You know, Francis says we are to be a Samaritan church and there is no one who gives greater witness to that than Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She once said, I never look at the masses as my responsibility. I look only at individuals. After all, you can only help one individual at a time. Just one, one, one. And so I began. If I hadn't begun, it would have been as if I had not put my drop in the ocean. But what is a drop in the ocean? Well, it's an opportunity to do something of value for someone else. Josephine Bakhita, one of our African saints, was a slave in Sudan. And she came to know the Lord. And in coming to know the Lord, she realized that life was not about her and her needs as much as she suffered. But it was about what I can do for the other. And so as we listen to this story during Lent of the Good Samaritan, we are reminded of Pope Francis's recent encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, in which he says, I want a Samaritan church. I want a hospital where people who are wounded and hurt can come for help and assistance. And we can do that in our lives if we see, if we're willing to give of our time and attention to those who are in need. I really marvel at Pope Francis's witness. Going to Iraq at a time of a pandemic, at a time that was violent, it was a great witness to us of being a church, a field hospital, attentive to those who are suffering. One of Pope Francis's first things to do when he was elected Pope 
was to go to Lapidusa, to be able to be there for the migrants, because his eyes were opened. And where were they opened? It was opened in his ministry, in seeing where people were in need, people were struggling, and he responded. During this Lent, we are called to pray, we are called to give alms, we are called to fast, but we are especially called to care for those who are in need, the littlest and the weakest among us. And so this Samaritan church of which we are a part is an opportunity to do for others, to see and to give of our time. Let's be this Samaritan church Pope Francis is calling us to be. Pope Francis loves the parable of the Good Samaritan because it captures for him how we're going to find joy and meaning and hope in life. You see, life for Pope Francis is not about him. It's not about climbing a ladder to get to the top to achieve power, prestige, and privilege. No, life is about what I can do for the other, what I can do for the littlest and weakest among us. I'd like to conclude with a prayer that Pope Francis put at the very end of his encyclical Fratelli Tutti, which tells us what we as disciples of Christ are called to be, to try to bring the world that is into greater harmony with the world that God intends. Let us pray. Lord, Father of our human family, you created all human beings equal in dignity. Pour forth into our hearts a fraternal spirit and inspire in us a dream of renewed encounter, dialogue, justice, and peace. Move us to create healthier societies and a more dignified world, a world without hunger, poverty, violence, and war. May our hearts be open to all the peoples and nations of the earth. May we recognize the goodness and beauty that you have sown in each of us, and thus forge bonds of unity, common projects, and shared dreams. Amen. Let's try to be the Samaritan Church Pope Francis is calling us to be, a church whose eyes are open and who see.